Why, hello everyone! How are you on this Wednesday? I almost said Thursday. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Still getting Heather, used... we made a big deal about this. I know we've we've told people multiple times, and people are still confused. But we've tried our best, and sometimes just and don't sometimes succeed. We get confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, we okay, are. Keep talking. I'm just gonna close the door uh, real fast here. I forgot to do that. How dare you! Um, we are already in a level two hype train. Thank you all so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you've got lots of questions for us, which is wonderful. Um, so before we get to those questions, let us get to the rules so that we all know what's going on here and how this all works. Uh, first and foremost, we are giving priority to the bit messages since that is some real world money spent. Um, at the end of stream, sometimes we do have time for highlighted questions, but that'll be at the end of stream, towards the end of stream. So highlighting your question now, I will not see it. You're going to have to wait till towards the end of stream for that. Um, please do not repeat the same thing over and over and over again in chat. You can get timed out or even banned if you're going to keep doing it. Um, that also kind of applies to the bit messages as well i think since we're on a new day now we get some new people but i do have a list of the mess of the bit messages we will get to it there's no need to repeat the bit messages or anything like that i will get to it there is a list we have been live for over five minutes and i haven't even started reading them so it will we will get on a delay sometimes as far as 40 minutes okay be patient we'll get to it um, please watch the length of your questions. The longer the question is, the less likely that we are to kind of understand the joke or understand what the question is in the first place. Um, no novellas, a new one from Friday, no screenplays. <laughs> 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 uh, um, it's, it's, it's just not going to play well. It's just not going to play off well. We're not going to have time. Um, what else? Oh, no spoilers. no spoilers. I haven't seen, I I cannot see since I also shifted my stream schedule. I haven't seen Miss Marvel or Obi-Wan yet or Top Gun or Jurassic World. Okay, listen, I don't have a ton of time on my hands sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Two of those are very good. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> But which one? You'll just have to figure it out. It's the I mean, ones you think. I, I was going to say, I already know which one's Doug. I okay. know you. I know your opinions. <laughs> I know which ones they are. <laughs> um, I, I think that's it then. I think we're good, yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Then let's uh, hop to it with some of these questions. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. So... The second Joker film was apparently a musical with Lady Gaga and talks to play Harley Quinn. This film just gets weirder by the minute. I didn't hear that part. Uh, I had a suspicion it was going to be a Harley Quinn uh, uh, tie-in, which, I mean, I think is the... If you're going to make a sequel, which I'm kind of with, Heather, I don't think you should, but <laughs> if you're going to, that's the only route you can go that would be kind of interesting. Do uh, something totally different. I, I, I agree. Or even, like, they were saying, like, do, like, a different villain or even, like, another Joker origin story or something. Like, just mix it up and do a completely different style. But I'm saying, if you're going to stay in that world, you're going to bring Phoenix back and do a, a true follow-up. Harley Quinn is the closest thing to, like, all right, I would kind of want to see that. I'd want to check that out. But, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Something different. Just mm -hmm. mix it up. Um, and from what I've read, uh, but I haven't read anything today about it, but from what I've read, a lot of this is speculation that people are reporting on as fact when none of this has been confirmed. <laughs> oh, if that was a thing, if Lady Gaga was it, that would be everywhere. Lady Gaga oh, is in yeah. talks. It is it, it is everywhere right now, but the more really? reputable She's news sources... The more reputable news sources have been specifying that she is in talks. Nothing has been signed and nothing has ah. been officially released yet. Okay. I mean, she's not a bad actress. I, I could kind of see that working. I don't know. I All could right. too. Yeah. I love Lady Gaga. Yeah, Honestly, no, I, I love her. <laughs> talent, yeah. So uh, and that'd be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. I really hope Lightyear will clear the bad taste that dumb uh, Dummian left you. Dominion, like oh. minions. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I, I well, you know, it's funny because I just saw another uh, movie. I just saw it yesterday. I saw. I got an early screening of uh, Elvis, so I got to really cram Ooh. a lot in this week. Uh, I, I can't say what I think of it. 
I'm very yeah. intrigued. Uh, it, it's. I'm going to be very interested to see what people think of it. Okay. Uh, as well, I will be very intrigued. Because <laughs> I, I, I got my thoughts, but I'm really curious to see how, like, the mainstream audience reacts to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, and I, I have no expectations for Lightyear, honestly. Not good or bad. I'm just like, I kind of like the cartoon, <laughs> honestly. So uh, I, I kind of thought maybe they did something like that, but they're going a different route. So, um, uh I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's cool because, yeah, obviously you don't want to see a movie that's bad, especially based off a franchise you like. So, um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug. I just watched a delightful animated masterpiece called Ernest and Cel Celestine? Celesti Celestine? Um, have you seen it? If not, I can't recommend it more. It's one of the most charming films ever made. No, but I know what it is. I know what you're talking with, like, the bear and the rabbit, I think. I think it's, like, an anime with, like, it, these animals. It's kind of like an anime Zootopia, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing ads for it, and it just kind of disappeared. And then I think I saw, like, an ad on Amazon or something. So, okay, I'll, I'll actually uh, uh, put that down so I don't forget. Yeah, was it going to Ernest and... It's Celestine? Celestine? It'll pop up. Yeah, okay. okay. I just put Ernest and, and it popped up pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so cool. NZ Multiverse, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, would you do an NC for the first Puss in Boots movie before the sequel? Uh, I don't have that much to say. Like, it was all right, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't have much passion to talk about it, so um, yeah, probably not. Modico, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, guys. Doug, I liked today's episode, but how come you didn't do any Chris Pratt jokes? Did I not get any in there? That, that's weird of me. <laughs> that's really weird of me. Uh, it might have been a week where, again, I was trying to cram uh, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff together and maybe just slip my mind. But, yeah, that's that's really weird. I didn't work in any Pratt jokes. That's really odd. Oh, sorry. <laughs> LPB the actor, thank you for the 150 bits. Which cartoon character or characters are you most like in real life? Uh, There was a... um. There's an old meme that was like, what three characters are most like you? And I'm trying to remember what they were. It was, uh, I remember, it was uh, Mr. Peanut Butter mm -hmm. from Bojack, uh, Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, and uh, uh, Jane from Daria. I feel like, yeah, that's kind of me. Though if I was very honest, it'd be Jane and a little bit of Chuck. <laughs> in okay. There too. Like, like, I need the geeky side. And then what's funny is that Rob did one and he's like, well, this is ironic. You know, mine would be, and they were all from the same show as they were just different ones. Like his was Hobbs, uh, Diane, and I think Daria. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all kind of like variations. That's really fun though. Sailor Aaron, thank you so much for that 17 month subscription. Welcome thank back. You. Appreciate that. Hello, all you wonderful people. Also 17 months with you guys. Can you believe it? Can I get a whoop, whoop? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. I think everyone knows that Chris Pratt will voice Garfield in the CGI movie of the same name, but did you know that Samuel L. Jackson will voice Garfield's father, whom we have never heard or seen before? Yeah, I was going to say, in uh, in one of the specials, you see his mother, but, uh, uh, but you don't see his father. Um, this is just getting stranger and stranger. I don't know. I, uh, it is. I don't know, man. We'll just have to see. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug. How would you rank The Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea, and Wolfwalkers from worst to best? Man. Uh, uh, best looking is probably Wolfwalkers. Uh, but the best film? I guess Secret of Kells. Uh it, though the C one's really good. It's rough. Uh, I, I think it's a toss up between Kells and uh, uh, the C one. Uh, Wolfwalkers, I like, but the, the villain was a little too one though, where I think the other films were uh, a bit more interesting in the uh, story. NZ Multiverse, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, how far are you into Amphibia and what are your thoughts? Uh, got up to, is it Marcy? I think that's her name. They, they ran into uh, Marcy. I like the second season a lot more. 
Uh, there's a lot more stuff for adults. I like that they're moving and going to different parts. Uh, the writing's much better. That Gravity Falls episode was really funny. Uh, the characters are more interesting. The mystery is worked in much more into the story. It's much more organic. Uh, so, it, yeah, the second season really, really takes off. I wonder if there's a thing, because I'm realizing this with a lot of anime shows I've had to watch recently, where there's, like, a stagnant first season where it's set up like there's such a world to explore but everybody has to stay in one place hmm. in the first season then the second season they go exploring i'm thinking like okay. star and uh disenchanted and this show mm -hmm. uh, tangled and stuff uh so it's interesting i wonder if that's like just a new thing or maybe it's a budget thing like they can't design as much or it takes time to design mm -hmm. uh i don't know with the second season they have more of a budget i don't know it it's interesting though I know, well, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, for, po for Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, I think they might be doing a Spider-Verse, like a sometimes choppy, sometimes clean frame rate. Yeah, they are. I don't really get why. I, the only thing I can assume is maybe it's a budget thing, because there's nothing wrong with that style, but why in Puss in Boots? Because uh, you have a first film. This is a follow-up. They're all designed the same, just the animation looks a little different. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure why they're doing that style. The only thing I can assume, because it's still laid out really nice, is like maybe the budget got cut in half halfway through and they're like, okay, just get rid of all the blur effects. You know what I mean? Just have it where like everything is kind of like a comic book and every, you know, th there's no whoosh lines or anything like that. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. That looks kind of fun. Yeah, I generally enjoy the style and I think they're probably just doing it because they think it's like the cool in thing to do right now, but... But, like but you said, there's other movies, boots? there's other movies in the franchise that don't have that style, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah, like something like The Bad Guys makes more sense, because that's a little bit more like, you know, they have the freeze frames and the, you know, comic lines in there. So, okay, this would be a little bit more choppy like them. That's part of the style. But, like, why put some boots? I don't know. <laughs> WWE and Anime Rules, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Alan, I mean, Doug, are you Alan. going to give a full NC review to Jurassic World 3? Uh, oh God, yes. Oh, my Jesus Lord. <laughs> 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 this is out of all of them. I, I don't know if it's the worst, but it is the funniest one to talk about out of the Jurassic World movies. It is just so bonkers. Uh, yeah, no, it, they, I, I don't even have to. Yeah. Oh, Christ. I'm already kind of excited. <laughs> That's hilarious sorry i don't know i just your your response was amazing oh god yes <laughs> <laughs> there's just so much to talk about i oh man anyone that's seen it you, you'll know what i'm talking about man it's just it's crazy i know guys thank you for the 50 bits is anyone else excited for matilda the musical i think this can be seen as a different take from the danny devito classic i'm so excited did you I've see never, the trailer? I did see the trailer. I've never seen the musical. And keep in mind, I've only recently opened up to that movie and, like, what actually a, a pretty damn good movie it is. Um, so I don't really have, like, a take on, like, it has to be this way or I'm open to, you know, something different. Because, honestly, it just kind of looks like the movie. Even the, uh, oh, what the hell's her name? The big bully, the lady that... Oh, Trunchbull. Uh, uh, yeah, like, even her, they showed her from the back. I just thought it was the same actress. And then when I looked up and saw it was, uh, what, Emma Thompson? I think, like, that really, really surprised me. I couldn't believe that was her, like, under that makeup and everything. Uh, it, which kind of made me say, all right, this might be fun. Um, because she's a good actress. And it's always fun seeing somebody act through a lot of makeup. Mm -hmm. If they're allowed to go really big and silly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know nothing about the musical. So, honestly, this will probably be a cool introduction to it. I'm really, really excited because I've heard great things about the musical. I'm really excited about, so Netflix, we've talked about this on Awesome Comics and Coffee before. Netflix has a new deal with the whole Roll Doll estate. That's right. And I'm actually really excited to see what they do because they are having Taika Waititi produce a lot of them. And honestly, Taika Waititi style with Roll Doll stories oh my God. sounds perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, shit. I mean, the guy who did Jojo Rabbit doing that. I mean, think about that. Like, sort of like this childhood way of looking at things, but just this dark, terrible, like, world out there, too. I mean, it's like that. You're right. That's like a match made in heaven. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they come up with. Uh, mm -hmm. what Roll Doll and Netflix and Taika Waititi all together 
come come up with. So yeah, this is like the first of the like roll doll properties that Netflix is working with. But this Matilda. isn't what uh, this isn't. Uh, uh, no, this, okay. no, 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 no. The Matilda musical is not. But gotcha. It's just the beginning of the roll doll mm-hmm. like universe. <laughs> yeah. NZ Multiverse, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, it's been two weeks since the delay of your review for Guardians of Gahul. Should we be worried? I think it just got released, so I'm not sure when we're going to post it, but, but I'm sure it'll be soon. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so keep an eye out. It's coming. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, I have never met anyone like that likes with honors, let alone loves it. I feel like it would make for a great review. Uh, I don't think anyone would click on it. Uh, you know, you, you got to do a balance. You do a balance of something you really want to talk about and then something that's like, okay, let's get something that people would click on. And uh, I don't really like that movie, but... I don't think it has enough of a following to be like, what's wrong with you people, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. It does have that really amazing speech in the middle, which, like I said, I think is the whole reason that film was even made. Um, so uh, probably not, but I guess, like you said, if there's uh, if you don't know anyone that likes the film, I guess it kind of speaks for itself why it's bad. It, growing up, I knew a lot of people that loved it, and I don't know, maybe now people are seeing it as uh, pretty corny. <laughs> Billy MJ says, today's my birthday. And all I wanted to say is thanks, Doug, for that cameo you gave me. I couldn't be more grateful. Well, happy birthday. Uh, Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. I guess that's twice I'm telling you that. Um, Yeah, I again, I just really want to emphasize to everyone, thank you so much for the cameos. I... They're going so well. And like I said, that they're all going to a different charity each month. And it just... It fills me the fuck up, man. I I just love it. Because I love doing the charity shout-outs, but I never knew how much good they were doing. I like mm-hmm. they're in the videos, people see them and stuff, but how much are, are, are people giving Clicking or aware of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, cause, and sometimes I put them on Facebook and you see people do donate and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but just, I, I can actually see, okay, like how much is going to the charities uh, uh, doing this? And it's just like, man, that's just it. Thank you all so much. I mean, it, it's just a, it, it's a wonderful feeling. And I did put the cameo link in chat, yes. so check it out. Kermit Wazowski, thank you for the 50 bits. I spent many a summer vacation watching Garfield and Friends reruns on Nickelodeon. It's an underrated gem. Thank you for spotlighting it. Yeah, it's so far it's interesting seeing how many people really liked it. I kind of thought people would be mixed on it because Garfield, I think, is one of those characters where because he's been around for so long, people kind of go, ah, to him. But I always have a soft spot. Uh, for him, and I have a soft spot for that show too. I forgot how funny the Buddy Bears were too. <laughs> like watching that now, I'm like, oh, this is actually still kind of relevant in many ways. That Disney nerd, thank you for the hundred bits. Hello, Doug Roos and Heather Walker. First off, how you doing? Second, did you know the reason why so many parents die in Disney films is because of the tragic true story of how Walt Disney's mother died when a gas leak happened in a house he had recently bought? Uh, that's a theory, but people say he never came down and said, well, well, the parent has to be gone in this, you know, uh, it's, I think it's a little bit more a commentary on the fact that back then there was much more focus on the nuclear family. So just having the nuclear family not there is automatically like interesting drama and something Mm. that can tug on heartstrings, you know, back then. And because the characters are usually very young and have to go through a journey, it's, usually a parent or parents that it happens to Uh, because i've heard that before and i've heard more and more historians say yeah i mean it's true that that it happened but it's not it may not hold as much water as you would think um but i don't know maybe he did go down and say kill that parent off all right mr disney I know, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Even though she was by far the worst character in Dominion, I still hold hope that the actress can get more roles in the future. She can be really good in a better movie. I'm assuming you're talking about the kid. I do, too, uh, because she is clearly acting her heart out and trying to make this work. Same thing with the first film, too. Um, And I hate it when child stars are given a really bad role like a poorly written role that is so easy to hate because then it's like oh come on like these poor 
these poor kids, especially like legit talented kids. I felt really bad for the actress in the uh, uh, Kim Possible movie as well, because I'm like, dude, I can see her being fantastic in something else, just not Kim Possible. Uh, and it wasn't a well-written movie anyway. So it's one of those things where you always kind of crush your fingers and say, oh, please, like, find something else that really showcases your talents, because you can see that kid has talent. Gary Turbo, thank you for the 50 bits. Before I start, I need to vent about Stalker's fanbase being toxic for a horrible reason. Now GCS Game World, who is based in Ukraine, just released a cinematic trailer announcing the game can just continue development after relocating to Prague, thank God. Instead of showing support for the developers, after all that they've been through, they start bitching about not seeing gameplay. Uh, I'm just looking up what this is. <laughs> it's Stalker's with like S period T period yeah. A period... Uh, it's a game. Just, yeah, just it's, it's a game series I don't know anything about, so yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't have much commentary on it. I know, guys, thank you for the 50 bits. Avatar The Last Airbender is getting three animated films. I repeat, three theatrical animated films. Really? I had not mm. seen news of that. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I keep hearing about the live action series, but... Uh... Uh, three animated films, so, okay, especially if it's done by the same people, or even if it's not done by the same people, still interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm down. Maybe they're going to animate the uh, comics, because there are some comics that's showing, like, what happened to uh, Zuko's mother and stuff, oh. so, uh, those. I see it on IGN seven hours ago. Hmm, all they're right. in the works. Interesting. Cool. I'm cool. down. All right, neat, love that. Is this Love the original that. uh makers or different people? I don't know. I'm definitely gonna have to do some more research before okay. Awesome Comics and Coffee, but we will definitely be uh talk about that at Awesome Comics and Coffee. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool, man. NZ Multiverse, thank you for the hundred bits. Doug, can we get a clue to ne to next week's nostalgia critic? Uh well what's the date? Today's Garfield next week. Uh <laughs> I'm a lot of people think I'm in this movie. I I, I guess I'll stop there. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. The One Punch Man movie has found its director. Funny enough, it's the person who directed Star Trek Beyond and Fast Five. Ah, okay. Um, Is that I the know... live action One Punch Man? I'm assuming. Uh, that's another one. I hear it's great. I've never seen it. One Punch uh... Man. Okay. First season of One Punch Man is great. Second season? Eh. It's not as good as the first. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but you should definitely like, check out the the first season of One Punch Man. You could be Saitama to a T. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I haven't been cast in the part yet is insulting, so I'm not going to see it, but uh, maybe I'll check out the anime. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. A Gran Turismo movie is in the works. Set to be directed by the guy who directed District 9 and released in August of next year, the movie will follow a teenage Gran Turismo player who applies their skills to competitions the world over on the road to becoming a real race car driver. Uh, cool. Yeah, this is another one I don't know shit about, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zalmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Clueless. Hmm. I love Clueless. And you oh, know Tamara oh, and I can, can do like a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's true with the Star Wars Valley Girl thing. Um, I do really like that movie. That's another one I don't know what I would add to it. The only thing I think I could add is maybe like predicting the future a little bit because there are some things that like did kind of happen. Um, but I don't know what I could add to it that everybody else hasn't already talked. I mean, it was a big hit when it came out. Critics mm -hmm. liked it. Audiences liked it. I mean, people have talked about it to death. The fashion uh, is still iconic. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, but it, it is great. I mean, it's a really, really good movie. I know, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. The Pop-Tarts movie has found its cast. It includes Melissa McCarthy, Amy Schumer, Hugh Grant, and James Marsden. It's about Kellogg's and Post fighting over who can make the first breakfast pastry. Where the hell's Chris Pratt, man? I'm not watching. <laughs> If there's not a crispy rat in there, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Houndoom, thank you so much for the thousand bits. We really thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Thank you. I just have to share this story with y'all because it's amazing. I had a chipmunk trapped between the panes of my sliding glass doors this morning, and my oh. cat was going nuts over it. It took 20 minutes to get him free, but he has been free. Oh, that's good. Um, I used to live on a farm where we had, like, those sliding glass uh doors and, mm -hmm. and we had like cats and dogs on the other side and stuff like that i don't think we ever got like a, a rodent uh trapped in between them but that's uh that's pretty cool <laughs> I, i'm glad i got away 
Honest reviewer, thank you for the hundred bits. Sup, Doug? Been thinking it's been a while since you talked about a TV show and then poof, Garfield review. Speaking of which, I was wondering if you'd ever consider doing a review on the five-part movie-length premiere of Transformers Prime. It's from the producers of the Bay Films, but without his influence, so it's actually good. Uh, I heard it's good, but I, I just won't have time to watch it. The reason I did Garfield is because... I did already have the DVDs. I've seen all the show. I grew up with it. I can talk about it pretty easily. It was just kind of on my mind out of nowhere. I was just kind of thinking about the Garfield character. And then like, originally I was just going to talk about Garfield. And then I'm like, eh, let's talk about the show. I, I can do that. I give it some focus. Um, so yeah, it has to be something I can turn out and understand pretty quick. That's why movies are a lot easier to do. But uh, yeah, the, the, there's a reason why there's a lot of space in between doing shows. <laughs> Zelmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. Ever plan on doing an NC on Dick Tracy? Maybe. It's an interesting film to talk about. I actually don't think it's a very good film, but the look of it is, like, mind-blowing. And even just the ambition to make this film is really impressive. I've never seen a film look like that. I can't think of another movie where there's harsh shadows, but also, like, bright, vibrant colors, and they weirdly go together. Uh, so yeah, just the look of the film alone is just like, I've never seen another movie like it. Uh, I think it's surprisingly boring. <laughs> I think with the exception of um, uh, Pacino, I think like everyone's weirdly boring, which you wouldn't think they would be with all that makeup and everything. But uh, yeah, I don't know, might be interesting to talk about. Gary Turbo, thank you for the 50 bits. What artist do you think improved after a improved after a drastic change. For example, Gwen Stefani got a lot better after teaming with Neptunes to make a diss track after Courtney Love called her a cheerleader. Nelly Furtado follows suit with Timberland to avoid being a one-hit wonder. I mean, with musicians, uh, mm -hmm. I think because I'm more of a movie guy, I, I, kind of, I can talk about like acting and directing and stuff like that probably more. Um, you know, a lot of... I feel like a lot of actors and actresses, like, if I don't like them for a while, it, like, it, just let them get a little older and then suddenly they'll have kind of less to prove or less of an image to keep and they'll turn to more interesting stuff. I think uh, it, Tom Cruise has been a lot more interesting. Keanu Reeves has been much mm, more interesting. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Costner, I mean, I've made fun of that guy so much, but his <laughs> acting recently has been really stellar, like, super, super good. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think that there's three for you. <laughs> Alex Loves Musicals, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you guys seen the Netflix Matilda, the musical trailer? If so, what are your thoughts? I love the stage musical and enjoyed the movie as a kid. So excited. I'm pumped. Yeah, I, it, it looks good. I don't know a ton about the musical. Like I said, I've just recently opened up to really liking the movie. <laughs> Have you read the book? No. Oh, um, okay, book's and, great. And, and I'm sure I get the feeling the movie is very much like the book. Um, it's not and, and, and a terrible course. adaptation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, again, it just with the very simple villain, <laughs> you know, just being like pretty much a monster, and the kids just getting crapped on the whole time. It's like, no, this sounds right. This sounds like Rodol. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I'm curious to check it out. Hewlett fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Hello, you visually superlative individuals. How y'all doing? Just curious, would you review more Pokemon movies? Some are genuinely good. I'm not kidding. I believe ya. Um, ain't never gonna happen, man. Uh, just <laughs> because Japanese copyright and everything is uh, super strict. I don't even think we posted the first movie review, I don't think, just because, uh, you know, it, it gets uh, claims and strikes and all that stuff. So uh, probably not, but I believe you. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug. Have you ever seen the movie St. Vincent? It's a little schmaltzy at times, but Bill Murray's humorously cantankerous performance elevates it quite a bit. Melissa McCarthy is also very good in a surprisingly subdued role. And that's what I hear um, only because I have to watch so much for a living. Uh, I haven't because I hear everybody say the exact same thing. Like, yeah, it's a little corny. It's a little meh, but oh, no, Murray's good. McCarthy is good. And I'm like cool i'm gonna wait till they do something that's like wow you know what i mean because <laughs> uh just time is short sadly <laughs> kp cruck thank you for the 50 bits two nc recommendations city slickers and city slickers 2 i used to watch the second one many times 
<laughs> you were young, weren't you? Um, I remember <laughs> when we saw the trailer for the second one. I mean, we were just kids, but we're like, that can't be real. I mean, like we. I mean, the first one was about these, you know, guys. They're all having midlife crises, and they're, you know, going out to a ranch to kind of discover themselves. And it's really like, you know, I don't want to say it's not coming of age story, but but like the, it's a self discovery story. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one's like the search for Curly's gold. We're like, what? No, no, no. This can't be the real sequel. And it was. It's just as dumb oh, as wink. it sounds. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'd have like a ton to say. I think it's pretty obvious what's good and bad about them. <laughs> Zelmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. NC request House Arrest 1996. It's about these kids whose parents are planning to separate. So they lock them down in their basement along with the other parent. Uh, you know, I remember seeing the ads for it. It did look really bad. Um, I, I never did see it. Uh, maybe? Because I do get recommendations sometimes, but I don't know. I don't know how well it'll do, and I don't know how much of a passion I have for it. But it, it did look impressively lame. Zelmiran, thank you for the 50 bits NC recommendation. Clue the movie. Yeah, I want to do that. Uh... There's some reviews where I'm holding off on them because I want to figure out the right way to do them because the way to talk about them should also be really interesting. Because uh, that movie, like just the fact that all those mysteries work with three different endings is so fantastic. And the way it actually is a really legit good adaptation of the game and everybody's really funny and, and just the writing's phenomenal. Uh one of these days, I'll get to it. It is on the list, but again, I gotta figure out what's the right way to do it. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, And this is supposed to be in a Darth Vader voice, but listen, I'm not very good with a Darth Vader <laughs> voice except just some uh, breathing. So, where is Buster? Is he safe? Is he all right? <laughs> um, I'm afraid in your anger, you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on, Heather, do it. I don't know the quote. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Come on, come on. No! <laughs> <laughs> that was still better than what we got in that movie. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> uh, no, he's good. He, he's getting much more active. We're getting him back into playing again, which is nice. Um... And uh, his fur is very slowly growing back. Like I said, they had to shave like the whole leg, which just looks so ridiculous. But uh, it's slowly grow uh, growing back. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. When an obvious bad movie tops the box office the first week, should those numbers count? In my opinion, <laughs> it's better to judge a movie's merit by second week. That way, word would get around if the film is worth it. Uh, I mean, I guess you could judge it that way. But I mean, the ultimate way to judge it is just go and see for yourself. But in terms of, uh, but I mean, there's plenty of bad movies that stayed number one for a while. I mean, there's a lot of factors. There's marketing. Some really great movies don't get marketed well. Others, you know, people will see because there's just nothing else to see. Uh, you know, you'll see a film be number one for like three weeks, but that's because there's like literally nothing else of interest out. So, um, yeah, I mean, the best way to judge is just go and give your own thoughts, you know? Mm-hmm. True. Pokemon Heroes, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, what's your thoughts on the Ezra Miller situation? Should they just can the Flash movie? I only know a little bit. Honestly, I know probably about as much about him as I do, like, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp stuff, uh, which is not very much. Yeah, um, it's... Uh... I, I, I don't know. It sounds like he's not in a good place. He's doing no, some really bad he's stuff. he's doing some really He's dumb doing some shit. really crazy stuff. Uh, I... I definitely recommend that dude see a therapist or a psychiatrist. I mean, because from what I'm hearing, none of that sounds rational. Uh, right. So I, I don't know what he's going through. And I, am I right? Like some of it's like like he's hurting some people too. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, yeah, like, he's like literally taunting law enforcement too on his socials that he deleted. And yeah, no, that ugh. that's that's a dude that clearly needs. Help. mental help yeah. uh yeah that that's you know the most i can hope for is that he gets the help he needs mm -hmm. favre films thank you for the 50 bits i had to really soul search on whether morbius or jurassic world dominion was worse well at least <laughs> morbius was shorter <laughs> that's true um we, 
I think we just got Morbius in. We just got the Blu-ray. I am going to do a review of it, but I will give you a heads up. I'm going to make fun of it. it. It's easy to make fun of. I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> uh, I actually thought for like, like I said, I thought it was a better monster movie than the Venom films. Uh, maybe that's why I was a little bit more lenient because I was just, the bar was so low uh, that when I saw, oh, Jared Leto's okay and like Matt's, Matt Smith, is that the guy's name? Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's having a lot of fun. And, like, I have a soft spot for monster movies, like mad scientist monster movies. So I'm like, I kind of gave it a pass. But it is very easy to make fun of and make jokes about. Uh, I just found it entertaining. Zalmirin, thank you for the 50, bis, 50 bits. <laughs> um, NC recommendation, Ants. Maybe. Uh, I do like that movie. I liked it a lot more than Bugs Life. Um, and uh, it would be interesting to talk about, like, the differences between the two, uh, especially comparing the animation now. Because I remember at the time, like, the animation Ants was kind of like, wow, man, I've never seen anything like this. This is so different. I get the feeling if I watch it now, it's not going to look that great, especially the faces, I think, are going to look like weird video game faces. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I might do that. It'd be interesting to talk about. KP Kruk, thank you for the 50 bits. Another film I think you should review is My Giant, starring Billy Crystal and George Moorson. I when it sorry, when it was advertised, it showed more comedic moments, and when I saw the film, it was more dramatic than comedic. The comedy mostly relied on the size difference between the two leads. Uh I mean it didn't look good. Uh, but that's another one where I'm like, who even remembers it? Uh, I mean, I forgot about it until you brought it up there again. So um, I probably not, but I'll, I'll try to check it out just to see it because I never did see it. Hewlett fan, thank you for the 50 bits. What are your favorite movie insults? My fave is, buddy, if my dog had a face like yours, I'd shave its butt and teach it to walk backwards from <laughs> the Cube 1989. Hold on. Uh, I love well, just calling people scruffy nerf herders. That's pretty good. Uh, let me see one. if I can find the whole uh, thing here. Or no, no, uh, 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 stuck up. That was it. Uh, it's from a fish called Wanda. Here we go. Uh, and, and this is just a great scene. So like, it, it's Kevin Klein is kind of the dumb American, and John Cleese is the, as the British judge, and you know Klein's acting like just a complete jerk and. You know, Cleese is being pretty reasonable, but I think he has like some sort of insult or something. And Kevin Klein just looks at him, really thinks, and says, "You, pompous, stuck-up, snot-nosed, English giant, twerp, scumbag, fuckface, dickhead, asshole." And I love it because <laughs> you can tell he didn't think it up. He was just saying it as the words were coming to his head. Uh, so that really, really makes me laugh. <laughs> Gary Turbo, thank you for the 50 bits. Can we all agree that Jackie Chan deserves an Oscar for his role in the Karate Kid remake? I think he got, like, an honorary Oscar just for all his years of work. I mean, that that's enough for me. Uh, what he deserves, in my opinion, uh, I still stand by this, is he deserves to be in one of the seasons of Cobra Kai. He should have been the guy <laughs> at the end of the last season who comes in, they ask for help to show, like, these universes are connected. Yeah. And that would have been phenomenal. Uh, I really think that was a missed opportunity. Pat and Soa, thank you for the 50 bits. I know Brendan Fraser isn't at the top of the list in terms of favorite leads, but would you consider doing a review of Bedazzled? I never saw that one either. Uh, that's another one I just heard. It wasn't that great. Like, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't that great. Um, yeah, maybe. If it has, like, a following, maybe. Uh, but again, I, I do kind of mix it up in between what I want to talk about and what I think people would click on, to. Mm -hmm. Strider for Life, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, have you thought of doing a collab with Brian Hall with something Disney-related? Him doing his Mickey and Donald and Goofy impressions would be fun. I was going to say, it, it, that's also the dude who did, like, um, Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, he, he was, like, Dracula in the new Hotel Transylvania, which is really, really cool. I've seen some of his videos. Uh, that dude's mad talented. Um, I'm not really doing that many crossovers unless it's someone, like, I really know. Uh, and it's something where it's like, oh, like, it'd be fun to work with this person because I know him. Let's have fun and stuff like that. So, um, uh, maybe if I met him and he was a cool guy or something. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, like, actively searching, if that makes sense. Yeah. Shadow the Hedgehog, thank you for the 100 bits. Are you a fan of Otakon from Metal Gear Solid series? I I've never, never played, played Metal Gear Solid. I'm sorry. sorry. I know, like, some of the 
memes and stuff like that, but I really don't know the game well. I'm sorry. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, Doug and Heather. I hope that you're doing well. I got to see my little baby cousin Joseph last night and even got to hold him. He's so precious. Oh, it's adorable. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. Matt Hanna, thank you for the 50 bits. Imagine if the monster level in Kingdom Hearts, Pinocchio was one of your party members. <laughs> That'd be he uses great. his nose to like stab people and stuff. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be fun. He turns into a donkey and like runs over people. <laughs> you can ride him. <laughs> oh no! Not Doug wanting to ride Pinocchio. <laughs> you got blurry, yeah. Doug. Oh, did I? Sorry. Yeah. Last last week we make a joke that can be really. You awful. somehow got blurrier when you I got that. blurrier. What the fuck? Okay, yeah. okay, hold on. Oh, uh, oh, wait, it shifted. Is this into good? Yep. Yep, we see you now. Oh, yeah, I may just have to stay like this for a bit. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, can you rate from best to worst live-action Disney character performances from these three options? Aladdin, Alice from the Wonderland films, and Belle. Gotcha. Uh, live-action yeah, character performances. Yeah, Aladdin. was it, uh, uh, Alice, Aladdin, and... Uh, Belle. Uh, I'll, I'll put Belle at the bottom. Uh let's i guess i'll say Al alice got a little better in the second film and then i guess i'll say aladdin because a he looked the part and b that dude can dance you can tell he was putting his all into a even if it didn't always work like he was really really trying uh and you could like really feel that effort uh when he was on screen so uh i'll give him that Talking of Carl, oh, I just read that, sorry. Uh, Pat and Zoa, thank you for the 50 bits. Safe bet that Kenobi is going to be in Disney December. I know it isn't over yet, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen episode five, but man, I am hugely disappointed in the show so far. And I'm someone who had no expectations. Well, <coughs> Me too. I like, with the exception of the Inquisitors, because like, I just found out what they were because of Rebels and uh, uh, Fallen Order, so mm -hmm. I guess I was looking forward to them. Uh, I, I mean, I... <laughs> I can't say I'm disappointed because it is entertaining. Just again, I don't think for the reasons they want it to be entertaining. I, I just feel like I'm watching a Shyamalan show. Uh, it, but something interesting I did just think of today, because uh, the director of the show, like she, she's got an impressive roster uh, in her background. I'm like, man, what happened here? Because she's like one of the producers and the, the directing all the episodes. And I think that might be it. It's all the shows are directed by her and a lot of series. I mean, even like, great ones mm -hmm. uh like the creators like direct a couple and then they hand it off to a couple of our people so i'm wondering producer and director and you're directing all the episodes i wonder if like was just in a hurry mm -hmm. and like rushing a lot of this and stuff like that because even like the blocking sometimes is weird so again i'm wondering if it was just like a rushed thing and maybe she was used to doing like coming in and you know like can direct one or a couple episodes like really, really well, but like a whole series, uh, maybe it's where it falls apart. Cause I didn't see many directors that do that. It's very rare to find a director that directs all the episodes and is like really, really good all the way through. Zelmir, and thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Shorts, 2009. Yeah, I heard of that. I've never seen it. I know it's a Robert Rodriguez uh film anthology i'm not even sure entirely what it is but uh and those usually do well so uh maybe at some point pat and soa thank you for the 50 bits just rewatched the supergirl review and i laugh my ass off every time rob and malcolm do the joke about the movie originally being written as a porno where's rob i need him to do the director voice again <laughs> um i for forgot about that joke uh yeah. you know what's funny because i do like that review i think i've seen our first viewing of that more than i've seen the review because there are some times where i'm i just remember seeing that movie like what is going on <laughs> like this is so bizarre uh and just having a real good time with it because yeah it, it was it was a lot of laughs sailor aaron thank you for the hundred bits also six more days until my parents 30th wedding anniversary i'm so hyped oh congrats man that's awesome Smash Ultra, thank you for the 50 bits. Speaking of Garfield, have you seen the two 3D Garfield movies, Garfield Gets Real and Garfield Pet Force? I saw, you know, it's so funny because I remember there were these little books when I was like, I don't know, in fourth grade or something like that. That was called Garfield Pet Force. And, and I was like, oh, that looks so cool. And for some reason, I never got it. So knowing it's a show now, I'm like, God damn it, where's fourth grade me? I wish I could bring him back 
you know, back to the future and show them that. Uh, I saw a little bit of the Garfield gets real thing because I think somebody recommended that. And uh, I, I mean, it was surreal. Uh, it's got some good in jokes in there, but uh, yeah, it's just hard for me to get into that 3D animation. That really does throw me off a lot. Zelmiren, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Nacho Libre. Yeah, I never saw that one. Uh, it had a lot of hype because it was like the guy that does that did Napoleon Dynamite. You know, he's back. He's doing this film. And then, like, no one ever talked about it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I might check it out. NC Multiverse, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I'm glad you're liking Amphibia more. The world building is a lot like you described in your Avatar 2009 review. It's rich in both unique characters and environments. Also, Marcy is my favorite. What do you think? I'm liking, yeah, the second season a lot more. And I, I didn't dislike the first season, but yeah, second season's so much better. I, I'm just much more engrossed in what's going on. I'm laughing a lot more. It just, it, the worlds are more cool. Uh, yeah, it, it's a lot more fun. Excuse me. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the hundred bits. The stage musical goes more in depth with Miss Honey's backstory, and there's a lot more of Matilda and her family. It's interesting that Emma Thompson is playing Miss Trunchbull. In the stage show, the character is played by a male actor in drag. <laughs> uh, that's fun. The you know the most I know about that musical is from uh Kimmy Schmidt, where Titus is trying out for the role, and the yes. guy that I guess took his role as the genie in Aladdin took his role in Matilda and he's literally playing Matilda. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. It's uh, very funny. I but, love but that's Kimmy all Schmidt. I, yeah, that's all I know about it. Crush level. Thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, have you been watching hack sign again? How many times must we tell you sword art online is the better show? You know, the truth is, I haven't seen either of them. I just remember the soundtrack to Hack Sign being really good. That Hack Sign has such a good soundtrack. Yoko it's Kano amazing. is one of the most, oh my gosh, it's she's prolific and amazing, and I love that soundtrack. I mean, it's amazing. All just, like, you just bop your head to it. I just love them. Uh, yeah, that's why when, because uh, they said reference something, you know, you're listening to on this. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. What what have I been listening to? And I had the little anime boy in the sponsorship. And I'm just like, oh, wait, Hackstein. Yeah, I guess I've been listening to that. That kind of ties into the anime. So, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, but I remember, uh, like, I don't even know, a couple decades ago, I think Rob was listening to it. And uh, I'm just like, what is this? Like, if, I just instantly fell in love with it. If I'm not mistaken, hold on one second. I have to look this up now to make sure I'm not mistaken. But if I'm not mistaken, it's by the same composer who did... Um, who did uh, Cowboy Bebop. Really? Yoko oh, that, Kano. Would, that would make sense. Yeah. It's the same person? Uh, uh, actually, I might be wrong. Okay. I mean, it, I'm it'd wrong. be cool, because, yeah, Cowboy Bebop's cool, too. I think I'm wrong. I just used to listen to the, a lot the same those same uh, composers at the same time. Mm. Okay. Well, they're both awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Macross. Oh, yes. Zeth yes, I love... Yeah, anyway. I can't get too distracted right now. Let's get focused. Hey, guys. Dino Mike, thank you for the 69 bits. Ho, wink. It will be 30 years after the release of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Could this film be a possible review for this year's Nostalgia Ween with Keanu Reeves' on and off accent and Gary Oldman's silly hairstyle? Yeah, I think we're going to do that for a Nostalgia Ween. Uh, the fact that it's 30 years later, it's like, oh, that's perfect. Because I wanted to talk about it for a bit. Because uh, it is a fascinating movie just what works in it and was it and what doesn't and sometimes it's hard to say what does because sometimes they're kind of the same like the look of the film is just so mind-blowing but then other times it's too mind-blowing it's really distracting uh and then sometimes it's too silly but sometimes it's just right sometimes it's really subtle sometimes it's too over the top so uh yeah i, I think there's a lot to talk about and yeah reeves is delightfully awful in it <laughs> Sailor Aaron, or say, yeah, sorry. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Also, great episode for Garfield and friends. I always watch the three holiday specials, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, every year. My aunt and I believe still has those three specials on Believe. What's, you know, sorry, DVD. Oh, I oh. totally misread that. <laughs> believe and DVD, that's... I don't know why my dyslexia decided to read DVD as believe because the sentence is my aunt, I believe, still has those three oh, specials okay, on DVD. Okay. okay. That's where yeah, that came from. No, because again, I'm like, well, I know it's like, 
like, because I would get words backwards like that. I'm like, but that's just creating a new word. How would you do I'm like, okay, believe they watch them on DVD. That makes more sense. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, anywho, uh, I've never seen the Thanksgiving one, surprisingly. Uh, I I've even read the little book on it. I should probably check that out. And I think I have it, too. I have, like, a collection of the holiday ones. Uh, yeah, I really like the um, uh, Christmas one a lot. Uh, what, Pat Carroll? Pam Carroll? The woman who voices uh, Ursula as the mm -hmm. uh, grandma uh, is just so good. Gary Turbo, thank you for the 50 bits. Can we, reca can we recast Timothy Chalamet as Barry Allen? He's also a good choice to play an awkward nerd, and Warner Brothers can digitally add him in the reshoots without having the, the cast they did in Star Trek De Deep Space... Sorry, god damn, I can't read right now. <laughs> Deep Space Nine and Kung Pao. Matt, did, like, this just happen, like, today or the other day? Uh, yeah, yeah yesterday. Like oh, okay, gotcha. Um, oh, dude, man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Warbirds. I mean, Warbirds it's basically it's all filmed. I would say just release the movie. It's, you know, it's already been delayed too much. Uh, you either need to release it or just kill it. Reshoots are not going to be the answer. I tend to agree. Um, I think people would be too curious. to. I hate to say it. It could, you know, drum up, like, more people want to go see it because of that. I mean, who knows? But, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. From what it sounds like, I hope the dude gets help. That, that's that's all I can hope for. Mm -hmm. Matt Hanna, thank you for the 50 bits. I've noticed that there hasn't been many grandfather figures in Disney films since Make Mine Music. They're usually grandmothers, and the recent one was a bitch. Uh, I mean, a lot of Disney films and Disney properties. Yeah, I'm not sure what the recent one is. Um, it's uh, Turning Red. Oh, I Turning think. Red. Um... No, I don't know. I'd have to go through, like, I'm trying to th even think of grandmother characters. I mean, I'm sure there are. I'm sure you're right, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I never noticed that. Hmm. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug. The actor who played Ron Stoppable in the live-action Kim Possible movie is currently on a great Justin Roiland show called Solar Opposites. He still does that same voice, but has legit funny writing and really makes it work. Have you seen it? No, I haven't even heard of the show. Uh, but that's I I've seen those two actors, him and uh, uh, Christine Romano, I think that's her name. Christine uh, Carlson Romano, thank you Thank you. Much. Um, <laughs> th thank you, yes, yes. Um, uh, make appearances uh, together and stuff. And I think that's really cool. Uh, I, she has a YouTube channel. You should check it out. Like, like she'll kind of cook mm -hmm. stuff with like other uh, uh, voiceover actors and stuff like that. Or even like... Uh, uh, like, cause she's been on like some Disney, uh, sitcoms and stuff. So she'll have like, you know, uh, them over and stuff like that. And it's a very cute channel. So you should, they make the, uh, what's the fucking, the nacho, the macho nacho, fuck, what's it called? I can't remember from Kim Possible. Uh, but they make it. And oh. she makes it with the dude. What, what the hell is it called? I can't remember. I don't remember what it's I'm, called. I, no, no, no. I, I, I gotta look this up. I'm chat? sorry. Nako? The Nako? The Nako. That was it. Yes, Thank you, chat. Uh, they, they make a Nako on there, and I think that's like their most viewed uh, video. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, it, it's pretty fun. Smash Ultra, thank you for the 50 bits. Because of the Chip and Dale movies, I'd imagine a Powerpuff Girls crossover movie where they recruit new Powerpuff Girl members like 3 and 5 from Kids Next Door, Jenny from My Life as uh. a Teenage Robot, and Penny from Inspector Gadget. I mean, who knows? I mean, like, is that... I think that film did well. I mean, people are still talking about it, so I'm assuming it did well. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows where it's going to lead, you know? Maybe other uh, studios will try it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Next week's review is a movie people think I'm in. I didn't think they made a live-action One Punch Man already, though. I already made that joke! Ha ha ha! Matt Hanna, thank you. I mean, to be fair, this was also a half an hour ago, so... Yeah. Okay, all right, fair enough. Matt Hanna, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you both been on a cruise? I took a cruise to Canada recently. New Canada. Uh, yeah, I, I've been on a couple. Uh, I like them. Um, I've I never been. I get scared that my motion sickness is going to be too intense. Oh, oh, don't, don't do a cruise. Uh, because every time I've gone on it, I, I don't get seasick, but it's weird when, when you hit rough waters, one of two things happen. You either get seasick and you're blah, puking in the toilet and stuff, or you get tired because there was one night where it's really rocking and my girlfriend at the time got really sick. And, and a lot of people had to get up during dinner and go to their cabins, you know, to, oh, it just felt so terrible. And everyone else that stayed was just trying to stay awake because it kind of rocks you 
to, to sleep. sleep is what it does. So it was really interesting. I remember like, cause I felt so bad cause she's like, you know, really having a hard time and like puking. Oh, I feel terrible. I'm like, oh, that's really sad to hear. Are you awake? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm awake. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, you get motion sickness. Do not do a cruise. <laughs> Hi, Noah, guys. Thank you for the 50 bits. Jason Schwartzman has been announced to play the Spot in Spider-Verse 2. I don't know much about some of the Marvel Spider-Man characters. I've, I'm I've just always... assuming he's blue, because that's what... Oh, wait, wait, is that... Shit, am I confusing? My Schwartz is here. Hold on. I see which one that is. Jason <laughs> Schwartzman. Is that... Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I was... Who's the guy that voices Sonic now? I forget ben Schwartz? Ben Schwartz, yeah. Oh. I just Schwartz <laughs> and funny person. I, I went there, yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, no, cool. That's why I'm like, well, he's got to be blue, right? Because he always plays blue characters. And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I hate it when I get my Schwartz twisted. I don't know why that really just made me pause, but your Schwartz twisted really just got me. I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm patting myself on the back. I'm out. <laughs> Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. So have you seen Disney's The Kid or Remember the Titans yet, Doug? I really like both of those movies. Hopefully I'll see them for Disney December this year. No, I'm trying to. I'm really trying to catch up with Disney December too. Like I said, I'm really behind. Um, and, and I'm still, I mean, you see me like watching the shows and like playing the games and stuff. So, so it's not that I'm doing nothing. But I mean, a lot of the usually easier stuff like seeing movies and stuff like that i'm really really behind on and i gotta uh i gotta catch up the longer stuff i'm right on schedule but yeah the uh short stuff i gotta really really uh uh got some work to do <laughs> dragon's toy thank you for the 69 bits ho wink would love to see you review cuffs doug i've never seen a pg-13 movie shove so hard against an r it's like k-u-f-f -F oh k-u-f-f-s uh, never even heard of this. Okay. Um, I'll try to check it out. All right. TDI Charlie Brown, thank you for the 50 bits. Hey, Doug, appreciated you, your take on Garfield and Friends. One of my all-time favorite cartoons. One mistake, though, Buddy Bears were supposed to mock the Get Along Gang, not Care Bears. Oh, oh mock the Get Along Gang, I, not the Care Bears. So there was a part of me that was thinking, like, I wonder if it's the Get Along Gang, but the fact that they did bears really made me think care bears right. uh i mean it's generally those show I, I think i even said shows like care bears and milo pony you know the everybody should be happy and get along you know to like a fault you know kind of shows mm -hmm. um so uh but again then there was kind of an irony that they'd have like us acres on there where they're almost doing the same thing uh but uh yeah man watching those Again, I really forgot how much I love the Buddy Bears. <laughs> if you have a point of view, then keep it out of sight. It's so funny. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Do we know if the actress who plays Shuri in Black Panther is returning in the future MCU projects after refusing to get vaccinated? I haven't heard anything about it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even know that part. Yeah, I know nothing yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I haven't heard that she has been recast, so I think she just did what she needed to do um but i'm not sure i not matter which one uh sherry even oh okay her uh oh yeah she was cool um yeah i hope it works out <laughs> crush level thank you for the 50 bits hey doug got an idea for a top 11 for you and yes i stole this from watch mojo the top 11 movies you can only watch once basically movies that are so scarring that they are impossible to watch a second time uh, you know <laughs> It, it, the only reason actually i wouldn't mind seeing that list uh but the only reason i won is because there's maybe only two or three movies like that for me and the reason i can't watch them i don't even think i could say on youtube <laughs> uh because they're like that disturbing uh the movie happiness is one. if you know that movie you know exactly why uh that's like a difficult disturbing as shit movie to watch but it's a very good movie um I know there's like one or two others, but like I'm, I'm blanking on them, but uh, there's not many. Cause I like watching a film that like really gets under my skin and how did it do that? And you know, mm -hmm. it did it work and stuff, but uh, yeah, there, there's very, very few where I see it. I'm like, that's great. I never want to see it again. <laughs> Pokemon heroes. Thank you for the hundred bits. D hey Doug, did you know that Bon Voyage Charlie Brown is the only Charlie Brown movie in which the adults actually talk? 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. I remember that movie. Uh, and you even see the adults the more I think about it. Yeah, huh, I never put that together. Hmm, it's kind of neat. NZ Multiverse, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I know that in fair use, you... Sorry, in fair use, you use no more than about eight seconds of footage. My question is, what if it's just the visual clip and it's not audio and you're talking over it with non-copyrighted music? Could you show the clip longer than that then? I mean, let's make it clear. You should not have to even do that. If you are doing a review, you should be able to show as much of it as you need even to Even according to the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, the, we're just working by the stupid hoops that YouTube has right uh, uh sadly but uh no and even then it used to be like 15 seconds then it went to 12 then 10 and i mean we've gotten hit for as little as like seven or six seconds i mean it, it's really really ridiculous um but uh i i guess i'm trying to keep it to like six or seven but i mean usually it's around eight but that's one of the reasons i mean look when you see my face pop up during the review. It's not because I love to see my face. It's because I need to break it up. Uh, and yeah, I will just, the one advantage that comes out of it is that uh, I do have to tighten the clips much tighter to be in that, you know, six to eight second range. And uh, it does make the review move a little faster and get to the point a little quicker. But yeah, no, I mean, anything that, even if it's a visual, uh, running for whatever over eight seconds i mean that'll that'll usually get hit so yeah i gotta just chop it up i'll even cut to like other reactions and stuff like that if i feel like it's going over or something so yeah it, it, it's rough it it sucks but uh um it sucks <laughs> talking of carl thank you for the 50 bits i don't know how but disney needs to needs to pull some strings to get May from Turning Red and kamala khan to hang out together i want to support that friendship because they seem like they would vibe yeah, I, I forget if I talked about it last time. Uh, I really like, I haven't seen the second episode yet, but in the first episode, I really like the way they did that more than the first half of uh, Turning Red, I because it's very similar styles and setup, but I really thought Miss Marvel like took its time letting the emotions like really sink in, mm -hmm. and their interactions felt a little bit more like real and relatable, uh, and not it's going to be gimmicky, of course, but like, it's not too over the top. It, it's to a point where it's like, okay, I recognize this. I identify with this. I, I, I see where they're coming from. Both sides kind of have a point, but also have faults and stuff. So, uh, and the style really feeds into that uh, big time. Like I said, I was enjoying it so much. I didn't even need the superhero element where in turning red, I'm like, the more interesting stuff is when she is the panda pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of in a minority on that. I think a lot of people uh, really, really like them. And I do like the movie. Uh, I just like the way Miss Marvel did that chunk uh, a lot more. TBI Charlie Brown, thank you for the 50 bits. Since you covered Garfield, when will you offer t your take on Kelvin and Hobbes? That's another one I've thought about because I do feel like I can say a fair amount about it. Um, but again, there are a lot of more and more people are coming out and talking about it. It's like, oh, they said like what I had to say about that mm -hmm. and that take and everything. So um, I don't know. It's another one I'd have to really, really sit down to think about how to talk about it. Because I mean, I got the complete collection. I've read through it lots of times. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, ha I'd have to think about how to uh, how to approach it. Zelmiran, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Turning Red. I'd like to see your take on it and why it's very polarizing. Uh, we were just talking about that. Uh, I'll do a Disney December mm -hmm. on it. Um, yeah, I, I think it worked in the, I mean, not just worked. I mean, like the last third is just like pure perfection. That's like end game perfection. I was like mm -hmm. so blown away how well done it was. Um, but, uh, I, and I do talk about like what, didn't work in it for me. I wish I did after Miss Marvel came out because again, I'd love to compare the two. Uh, but uh, it, but it does work. It, it is a very good film. Alexander, thank you for the fifty bits. Random Jim Car Jim Carrey quote of the week: "Chaos is power." <laughs> um, I think Skeletor had that quote too in Masters of the Universe. So you know, somebody should sue. Dark Hound Inc., thank you for the 50 bits. Hello, Doug. Just a quick question. Are you planning on reviewing Jurassic World Dominion? I mean, you can resort, you, you can go back to my other answer that I had, but uh, the Cliff Note version is hell yeah. <laughs> 
KP Cruck, thank you for the 50 bits. Another recommendation is Calvary. It's an Irish drama about a priest who hears a confession from a guy who was abused by a priest and decides it's going to kill this innocent priest as revenge and gives him a week to get his affairs in order. I know of it from another channel called Upon Friar Review in which two Franciscan priests review films and shows with Christian themes. Oh, Chris O'Dowd is in. Okay. All right. I never even heard of this. Um, all right. I might check it out. I kind of like, I might be interested in that YouTube channel, Upon Friar Review. <laughs> All right, okay. It's a good title. TDI Charlie Brown, thank you for the 50 bits. I remember you mentioning your mom being an opera singer. Did you ever get to watch her perform on a stage? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, not only did she do, uh, I mean, when we it came about, um, she would still do like, you know, like little stage performances here and there. But I mean, she would sing at a church. Her and uh, my dad would like, you know, pick the music and, <clears throat> uh, you know, do the choir and and he would play piano and she would sing and stuff like that. So I mean, like all the time we would hear her uh, sing every morning, especially when going to church, we had to hear, Neo, Neo. <laughs> you know, I mean, just like the whole ride over. Zelmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, the live-action Ben 10 movies, Race Against Time and Alien Swarm. Uh, I didn't grow up with Ben 10, so I don't think I'd be a good person to talk. I'm trying to get better at talking about stuff I know about. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and I know there is a charm to talk about something you have no idea about, you know, and there's some fun to that too. But uh, again, with so much media out there and even nostalgic media, it's like, okay, I, I want to spend it on stuff. It's like, I know my shit on this, you know, when yeah. I, I can, I, I can give an interesting opinion on it. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug and Heather, what is the most underrated movie scene where the main character goes out in the most badass way? For me, Jack Sparrow in Pirates 2, where he goes down with the ship while taking, taking on the Kraken. Uh... I mean, this isn't it, but it's the only one that's coming to my brain for some reason. The villain in the Scorpion King. What a random movie to pick. <laughs> but it has one of the great <laughs> villain deaths in it. Have you seen this movie, Heather? Yes, I've seen the Scorpion King. I so, used to so, be obsessed with the mummy. Oh, oh okay. So, so do you know what I'm talking about? Where yeah. it's like the dude has like these flaming swords and the rock. He just got shot with an arrow and he takes the arrow out of him. He puts it on the bow and this guy always gets the arrow, so he sticks him in gasoline, lights him on fire, he's like, yeah, come on, and he's over this cliff, and these people are about to light an explosion, it's supposed to blow up the temple, but it looks like they're stopped, so the rock fires the arrow, It he, the guy tries to hit it, but he misses, and it hits him, and it launches him backwards, and the heroes blow up the place just as he's flying backwards, and he's flying into the explosion, and falls right through it on fire, and then I think lands into like more gasoline or something, it's something crazy like that. <laughs> Uh, oh, and the fucking, um, oh, I'm blanking out the Dennis Rodman movie, the, uh, was it Frying the Coke? Yeah, that, that's pretty fucking oh. great. Like the tiger attacking guy while he's blowing up. Uh, that, that's pretty great. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Just watch your latest vid, Doug. Do you know Garfield is playable in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl? Now that they're... Now that there is how you know he's iconic when he's whooping Reptar and Nigel Thornberry's <laughs> ass. Uh, am I still blurry, by the way? Yeah, you are. God damn it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is that better or no? Oh, there you go. There you are. Okay, okay. okay. Am I still okay? It's even better when you're so close and your head I is know, so big. So and I'm just like, hi, Doug. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a very disjointed uh, Brady Punch here. Mm -hmm. Um, No, I, I, I have played that game. And that's I, honestly one of the reasons I got that game. Because I'm just like, oh, my God, again fourth grade me has always fantasized about like playing a Garfield game, especially like a fighting game. So I'm like, okay, I'm principal. I have to get this and play it. Uh, I think it's kind of the same thing with like the multiverse game that's coming out. I'm yeah. just like, okay, I get to play as Bugs Bunny and Batman just on principle. I have to, to make fourth grade me happy. Zelmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. You've been a guest on Phantom Strider's channel a few times. Why not ask him to join an NC episode? Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what we do. Uh, I don't know. It might be something. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Um, yeah, maybe at some point. Zelmirin, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. I've, you know, maybe, because I bet that's becoming nostalgic now, because it came out 
Nobody saw it and it just disappeared, but everyone said it was really bad. But now it's like, that, that might have some people looking at it. What's it called again? Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Yum. I'm sure they'll pop up. There we go. Um, yeah, 2007. That's, that's probably nostalgic. Now, yeah, I might check that out. I never saw it. It looked bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually kind of curious to check it out. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Okay, I gotta ask, any Don Bluth NC reviews this year? Will it be Secret of Nim, Land Before Time, Anastasia? I, I'm literally writing one right now. <laughs> so, <Ooh>. um, yes. <laughs> Pat and Soa, thank you for the 50 bits. Hate to say it, because the kid is so young, and I'm sure she's trying her hardest. I'm trying to figure out a way to put this in a not spoiler way, because this is kind of a spoiler. Uh. Um... The, the the child actress in Obi-Wan. Oh. Do they, they just really hate that character now? <laughs> I mean, not the whole Listen. character. I mean, look, that's a long legacy. That's like hating Darth Vader because you don't like Hayden Christensen. It's like, no, no, come on. There's just, the character's too good for that. Uh, but, uh, okay, that is another one where it's like, I feel... I feel bad for her, but to her, but to the credit, everyone's bad in the show. <laughs> so, um, and and she's not written well, and the show is not written very well. So, yeah, I don't know. The only one that's coming out of this unscathed so far, uh, I think it's James Earl Jones. If that's even him, uh, it is. It is him. They say that, but I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing something. I, I believe they called him in to get the performance. Okay, but they're doing so. They're doing something like what they did with Mark Hamill's voice mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Boba Fett. Um, but no, it's it's a shame. I really wish her nothing but the best because um, I feel like that acting could be totally fine in, in like a Disney sitcom or something like that. You know what I mean? Like like she'd be okay. Um, but again, I don't know. I'm really starting to think it was just a rush production because I'm just looking at everything. And even though it looks expensive and professional and stuff, the mistakes feel like good enough. Let's go to the next one. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's really what I'm wondering with it. Because they're also turning out a lot more Star Wars shows, just Disney shows in general. I mean, like yeah. Miss Marvel, uh, Obi-Wan. And then I think like I saw an app for another show, like Love, Victor or something like that. All came out on the same day on <laughs> Disney Plus. Like yeah, that they 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 might need to slow down for a second here. Um, if we're gonna keep getting material like that. Although again, I like Miss Marvel. Yeah, I don't know. I I kind of like the character. I mean, I don't love the character, but mm -hmm. like we said, they're doing their best. They're like ten years old. They're doing I, their best. I feel bad. But I, also I, like. I don't think that's an unfaithful version of that character. I see what they're trying to do. I don't think it is. I, I, no, it, it's one of those things where it's like in a parallel universe, I can see. It's the same thing with Hayden Christensen as Anakin. Like when you see him in those prequels, it's like, I get what you're trying to do, but you need like a Clone Wars to come around and actually do it right. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. It's not like there's nothing there. It's like, no, right. no, no. I, I see the potential. I, I, I see the blueprint. It's a good blueprint. It just, something's getting lost in translation, in the construction here. You know what I mean? Whether mm. it's the writing or the acting or directing or whatever, it's just something's getting lost there. But I agree. It's not, I can't, it's not that I look at her and say, oh, well, that's, you know, that's not her at all. It's like, no, I, I see how it is. I just think something's getting lost in the middle there. Yeah. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, are you familiar with the book A Thousand and One Films You Have to Watch Before You Die? And if so, have you ever tried to watch every single um, entrant in that book? Knowing you, you might have knocked off half of them already. I, I do try to see films that everybody say, you know, like this is a classic you should see. On um, HBO Max, I still have the French beauty and the beast uh mm. saved on my list and it's like what five easy pieces is on there too i'm like well i've never seen that i know it's like a famous movie so it's like but i try to see a lot like the classic you know uh a streetcar named desire you know and uh uh it was like the third man and stuff like that you know the 12 steps uh all this wait is it the 12 steps the hitchcock film i forget anyway <laughs> uh maybe it's not that but uh or it's like the 11 steps 18 steps i don't know 12 steps is Anywho, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I try to, but I know I'll never see them all. So again, I'm trying to go after the ones I think would be really interesting. I do really want to see that Beauty and the Beast because everybody says that's a classic. 
Modica, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, you mentioned a few times that in your spare time, you were working on a side project that involves a lot of drawing. You don't have to go into detail if you don't want to, but is it perhaps something animated or a comic book? Uh, that's another one I'm falling really bad. Something about getting back on track after COVID, I'm finding myself drained a lot easier. And I know mm -hmm. that's part of getting older too, being 40 and stuff, but I'm like, it's got to be something about getting back to normal because little things that pop up, like I said, like Buster needing an operation, stuff like that. Like, of course, it's going to take time. It's going to be a little emotionally draining. I hope he's OK. But it's like super draining now. So I'm trying to find ways to combat that because like, I'm really behind with that. I'm behind on the Disney Sembers. So um, it's. I don't want to say it's animated, but it's the equivalent of like an animatic, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It's something I kind of want to do with that. And it's not, I don't want to build up like a big project because it's really not. It's just a personal thing I've wanted to do. Um, uh, and hopefully, again, originally I was thinking this year, but I'm like, it's probably going to be next year. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Pat and Soa, thank you for the 50 bits. You didn't answer the question, Doug. Where is Rob? What did you do to Rob, Doug? What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the Rob? Uh, no, he, he's around. I, I just saw him yesterday. We we're watching our, our Down Bluth movie. Um, yeah, he's usually busy on, on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's not able to make these. But uh, did he make it last night or no? Heather? He did. He okay, did. Cool. You yeah, missed so out. We had a lot of fun. I I. I I hate when I miss out. I, I wish I could do those. I, I, had to go I know see you are I'm very, sorry. very busy. I'm sorry, but, but you, you know, I love playing those. I really want to do multiverse when that comes out. So yeah. yeah, like just let me know when that comes out so I can like, just look super, super far ahead. Be like, okay, Tuesday, be available. I don't care what's going on. Just be available for that. <laughs> Talkative Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. In the Kenobi series, what separates the third sister from characters like Tarkin and Thrawn? What is the X factor that she's missing? Oh, I'm not even thinking of uh, that because Thrawn in uh, Rebels, I didn't think was was that great. Uh, I I'm thinking of what's her name from uh, Fallen Order, uh, the ninth sister. Ah. Uh, like, I think that's just one of the great Star Wars. Oh, uh, you mean the second sister, I think. The... Wait, oh, the ninth sister. Did you say the ninth sister or the ninth sister? No, but now I know how I made that mistake. <laughs> okay. In, in Fallen Order. Um, the the um, uh, Tarlin. Uh, uh, that that's her name, right? Isn't it Tarlin in uh? No. Um, what's her there's name? There's Marin. The there's Marin, the night sister, and then there's the second sister. Um. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yes. And, and then what's her name with the Trilla. second sister? Trilla. Trilla. God, I am so sorry. My, <laughs> like I said, my mind's just, just ignoring me, man. Something, something happened after forty. I didn't even have all my marbles before then. Uh, but okay, like Trilla. Uh, that's the one where I'm. And the Art Inquisitors are great too. But that's the one where I'm just like, oh, you ain't no Trilla. Man, because uh, uh, she was just so good and so, so good. well built up. And yet, even what was revealed in this one that just re was released, I'm like, but wait a minute, there's a ton of things that don't make sense about this, and it just doesn't add up. I haven't and... seen it yet, Doug. Okay, I won't, I won't. But um, but that's another one. I don't know. I, It's kind of like the prequels where I'm like, I don't know if these actors are actually this bad. I think this was just rushed or, or something was off or something because I'm thinking like, nah, because a lot of these actors I've seen good in our say, oh, McGregor's like a great actor, you right. know, obviously. And he's a little off in this. So um, yeah, I, I'm just thinking like, I'm really hoping they can go to something that just utilizes their strengths uh, a lot more. But yeah, uh, for me, I think there really has to be that intimidation and that, slow reveal which again i feel like they were trying with this character uh but like with trilla it was just so perfectly done it's so masterfully done uh and it it can be done in a uh a show i, I don't think it has to just be a video game mm -hmm. uh you know or it can be done in a movie so um yeah i think a lot of it's the presentation because i didn't get anything with thrawn either i think they were just writing that name in rebels uh, but if you were to tell me that's one of the great Star Wars villains, I'd be like, why? <laughs> you know, you read the books and you see why, but it's like in the show, I'm like, it's just another general, whatever. Uh, so yeah, I think there's there's something about how you slowly build them up and reveal them and make them more complex. Like, like peeling an onion, you know, like Shrek, there's layers. <laughs> right, right. Larry C2K, thank you for the 50 bits. It's Morbin time. It is indeed. <sighs> Uh, that was my favorite part of Morbius when he said it's Morbin time and then morbed all over those guys. That's my favorite part. 
<laughs> Mormon. That's the tw- that was like the tweet that started the whole Mormon time Th- thing. That is. It's hilarious. This is one of my new favorite things on the internet. Uh, acting like stuff exists that so clearly didn't. I mean, the most obvious didn't exist stuff like what's the simpsons character like groovy or something like that <laughs> and i mean doesn't it barely even looks it looks like a sea monkey i mean wouldn't be in sim but people are like filming it and they're animating it and they're showing it like on their tv i love that dedication that is so <laughs> funny and i think the morbid time thing is another one that's hilarious i saw one that was like gex the 90s tv show and somebody animated it like it was on uh toon disney it, it, it's brilliant it's fucking brilliant because you know that just would never exist and it's oh it's so funny i love it i, I love this era right now. yeah zelmiran thank you for the 50 bits since you're a huge fan of bebop what are your thoughts on the creator's other works samurai shampoo space dandy and the kids on the slope is it wolf's Rain in there too what, i'm not the sure um uh, uh, Shampoo, I think I got about halfway through. And it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. It, it, it's good. But yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm always going to compare it to Bebop. Uh, if Wolf's Reign is on that list too, that that's the only show that I think is about on par with Bebop. Because uh, I really, really like that show. Um, maybe Bebop's a little better, but Wolf's Reign's pretty close. Um, yeah, I'm blanking if that's the same person, but uh, chat has not chat is chat. Please help us. <laughs> <laughs> they have not helped. <laughs> that Disney nerd, thank you for the hundred bits. As someone who grew up watching Lilo and Stitch and still loves it as an adult, it's so hard to think that in six days it will officially be twenty years old. Yeah, um, it's weird. Oh, what what they bring up that was gonna be third? The uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula being thirty years old. I don't know that. That sounds about right, the more I think about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Lilo and Stitch, yeah, it's always... I I hear, like, everyone's always, like, when they're looking back, uh, just naturally, they're always, like, a decade off. They're always like, oh, yeah, wasn't that, uh, you know, in the 90s? It was like, no, it was the early 2000s. Like, just as you get older, you're always kind of off by a decade. So that's why it seems like, no, no, it can't be that old. And it's like, yeah, it is. It's an interesting thing uh, that our minds do. Being the nostalgia critic, I obviously don't know much about tdi charlie brown thank you for the 50 bits you gotta watch the thanksgiving one grandma arbuckle nice. returns oh nice okay yeah i gotta see i got it on dvd um yeah no i haven't checked that out uh i'll watch it i'll watch it orlando garcia thank you for the 100 bits i actually read the synopsis for pink flamingos from 101 f- or 1001 films you must watch question uh three questions number one what the fuck number two is it viable for freak show cinema and number three what the fuck <laughs> um you know i've never seen the whole thing i should i it's one of those where i've heard so much about it and i've seen the clips that everybody talks about um i've never seen the whole thing and it's one of those where i feel like I get the idea and, and this is good. It's well made for what it is, you know, for like the kitschiness and stuff like that. Uh, but it just doesn't look like it'd be my thing. Um, one of these days I should force myself to actually sit down and God damn it, watch the whole thing. But um, I, I don't know that making a freak show cinema. Cause I just don't know if YouTube would allow it. Zelmiren, thank you for the 50 bits. Are you a fan of any studio gain X slash trigger works? Even Galleon, Fully Cooley, Gurren Lagann, Panty Stocking, Kill a Kill, Little Witch Academia. I am. I love their shit. Even Galleon, fantastic. Well, what's Gurren the studio Lagen, one more time? Uh, Gainax, G-A-I-N-A-X slash trigger. Love Even Galleon. Love Gurren Lagann. Fully Cooley is wild, but interesting. Panty and Stocking is really out there. Kill a Kill's great. I I love their stuff. I feel bad because I love know, I, I know these shows. I haven't seen any of them. Like really, I, you haven't even seen. You would like okay. You of those, Doug, you would really vibe with Gurren Lagann. I think. I think you would love Gurren Lagann. Okay, I, Rob was telling me about Little Witch Academia. I think. I think that's the one he was telling me about. He said it gets uh, uh, kind of trippy. Um, and of course, I've heard of like Kill a Kill and Evangelion and stuff like that. I mean, it's like these are. I know these names. I have not seen these animes, sadly. Uh, I believe you when I when you say they're great. I just yeah, I haven't gotten around to it. Zelmiran, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, please do Jimmy Neutron on NC. The movie is the pilot to the series, so you don't need to watch any of the show to understand it. 
I might. I think I have it on the list. That's one of those where, or do I, I took it off the list? I should have it on there. Um, I'll make sure it's on there just to be uh, safe. But yeah, because you're right. I don't need to know anything about it. And I've never seen the trailers for that over and over. I'm just like, okay, well, I can't wait for this to go to the dollar bin, whatever. And it's like still like being talked about and people remember it and really like it and stuff. So it's like, all right, something must have been there. <laughs> Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. I haven't watched Chippendale Rescue Rangers because I still respect myself, but did he, do you know if Earl Sinclair or any of the other dinosaurs are among the several cameos? That would seem like a no-brainer. Um, uh, first of all, you should watch Chippendale Rescue Rangers. It's I mean, actually it's hilarious. Fun. It's pretty fun. Uh, it, for what it, I mean, if you look at the trailer and you're open to it, you're going to have a good time. If you're like, nope, have no interest, Maybe you're right. Maybe you won't like it. Uh, but I'm trying to remember. I don't remember the dinosaurs being in there. But I don't there, think I they mean, were. I, I'm really not kidding. There were so many, so many cameos and Easter eggs and stuff in the background. It's like they very well could be, and I may have just missed them. Mm -hmm. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Heather, you're going to hate me for this, and I am because I read ahead. Yeah. But one pun from B-Movie I found legit funny was <laughs> a perfect report card, all Bs. I can't help it. It makes me laugh. How many times do you think I heard that? The answer is a fucking lot. Every time I handed out report cards, my kids who, like, used B-Movie as, like, baby's first troll were like, Hey, hey, Miss Roos, a perfect report card, all Bs. And I'm like, I hate all of you, every single one of you. If one of you asks me one more time if I like jazz, I'm going to make you leave this classroom. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I don't know if I like, hate, or both that that's what happened to that movie. Because I do think the movie's a little fun. <laughs> it's one of those where it's like, this should not exist, and that's kind of what's fun about it, and it kind of abandons the story. And I love seeing people that, like, have not seen the movie, they just know the memes, and they're ready to hate it, and they watch it, and they're like, I don't know, that, that was actually a little better than I thought, because it just has no right to exist, or be, if you will. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still wondering if I want to do a video on it or not, because, again, I don't know if I fully follow or understand like the meme culture that came out of it and just how there's no meme it culture it's just 13 year olds yeah, reciting right. the I movie mean, <laughs> so, so it's a part of me that's almost like I don't want to give that attention either but I'm also kind it's, of like as I much as a good time with the movie and I kind of like talking about it a little as bit, much so I as know. I feel like it gives me the thousand mile stare like you, you do have to laugh about it because it's like okay guys we get it but it, yeah. it is kind of funny but honestly if you do do that review you need to have like feral teacher Heather in there being like ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same thing with uh, uh Morbius at this point uh just like do I want to review this because it's like such a big thing right now uh and a part of me gets it but then there's a part of me I'm like yeah but do you am I just gonna like under am I gonna figure out I don't understand this meme at all you know what I mean uh but I don't know I, it's like I feel like I get it and can talk about it Tulip fan, thank you for the 50 bits. What is the most you've ever cried being touched by a cartoon? Honestly, for me, it's moral oral. As dark as the show is, I think the final scene is absolutely beautiful. I think it's the only adult cartoon ever to have a happy ending. Hmm. Uh, um, all of Grave of the Fireflies. I'm a mess it, every time I watch Grave of the Fireflies. I'm a freaking mess. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> Again, the one that's popping in my head is uh and again i can't go into too much detail but in wolf's reign there is a death with one character walking towards another one laying down i'll just say that uh and uh i just so wasn't expecting it and it was so drawn out in a way that just really felt like oh man like like these these characters are really really like they're really leaving this earth you know what i mean and the way they interact off each other is just like so it's so like heartbreaking but also heartwarming at the same time and uh it's funny because there's another scene after where a character comes up and says what you know what this person's death meant and opens his heart i'm just like no 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 that, that, that's too much now you're too late the, the other scene got me i mean you're not gonna get another one out of me i'm sorry <laughs> you know kind of thing but yeah that that really like oh like that that's a rough scene 
Alan, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug and Heather, what do you think about Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn and Joker 2 being a musical? It's interesting, <laughs> but not confirmed. Uh, <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> I'll say this. Again, I'm saying that's the only thing I think could make it interesting if they do make it kind of, if they work Harley Quinn into it. And a musical? Um, I don't know. I'd have to say, again, it's different. So it I'll is. give him that. Uh, and I did like the first one, but I... It hasn't totally won me over, but I'm a little open to I'll be a little open to it. I'm still a little blurry there. Is you made better? yourself blurrier? No. Yeah, what, what the fuck, man? Is that better? No. <laughs> How is this happening? This makes no sense. Oh, better. Okay, you got better. Are we good? Are we good? You got better. <laughs> it, it, it's like there's so much light in here, too. I don't know. I wonder if it is because you are so lit. Maybe. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, here, wow. hold on. Let me, I'll, I'll turn off the lights back here and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, this isn't a ton of light, but maybe, maybe it'll make a difference. Let's see. Or I'll just look more on Casper. If I don't oh. have these lights, I look like Casper. <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Or yeah, worse? it may have made it better. I don't even know. Right, cool. Orlando okay. Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. I have to say, I have no desire to watch Disney zombies, but the coach's strategy scene is legit comedy gold. You go here, go forward, don't turn back. There's nothing for you there, nothing. You go up here. It, it, the, the first one is much better than it has any right to be. Uh, it's really not that bad. I think I remember the second one being pretty bad. But uh, the, the first one's surprisingly okay. You can tell they're trying. They're really legit trying to give you something of quality. And I respect that because nobody is expecting that. <laughs> Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. So recently on my feed on YouTube, they've been a compilation of Malcolm in the Middle. I've been watching the Lois ones and Francis ones. So have you seen that show? Who's your favorite character and moments from the show? Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite all-time shows. It's so good. Um, <sighs> favorite moment is probably uh, the firework, the ultimate firework. Uh, again, yeah, if you haven't seen it, just type in Malcolm in the Middle firework, and it's it's such a brilliant joke, uh, but but that's a really great joke. Um, <clears throat> and probably Francis, almost anything going on with Francis was always interesting. Um, but it, all the characters are really good and really fascinating. Uh, yeah, I I love it. I, I, I It's one of those where it's like there's bad moments, but I don't think there's a bad episode. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. so good. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. I'm so late, so I don't know if anyone asked this, but thoughts on the Bob's Burger movie, and are you doing it for Disney December? I am. I still haven't seen it. Man, it's going to be gone from theaters by the time I get around to it. And I feel bad because I want to support that movie because I love Bob's Burgers, but I just too much stuff's been going on. I just haven't gotten around to it. I will do it for Disney December, though, and I, I love Bob's Burgers, so I am excited to see the film. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who is England's greatest prime minister? Lord Palmerston or Pitt the Elder? That's a Simpsons reference in case there's confusion. Pitt the Elder! <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What would you say is your overall favorite comic book show? Comic book show? Batman uh, the Animated Series. I was going to say probably Batman. Uh, I'm always going to have a soft spot for X-Men. Um, mm -hmm. Like, Batman is clearly better, but when I think of, like, 90s nostalgia, what show would I get the most excited for? Like, I can't wait to see what happens. It, it was X-Men. That, that just spoke a language to me that just, like, totally worked on my 90s reptilian brain. <laughs> Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, I was wondering if you started watching Stranger Things Season 4 yet, and if so, what are your thoughts? It's my favorite season so far. I gotta give it a chance. I started it... It wasn't bad, but it wasn't grabbing me, but everyone's like, you gotta fucking watch it. So I'm like, oh, okay, I probably will. I guess just fitting in time too, but uh, I I'll give it a chance. And I should, because I've seen the other ones and I, I do really love the first season. I like the second season, so I, I should give it a shot. Enough people have said, no, it's worth it. I, I believe you. Strider for Life, thank you for the 50 bits. Have you seen Everything Everywhere all at once? If so, you saw, uh, if you thought Doctor Strange was weird. Sorry. Yeah, I, I still have it. Did you ever see it, Heather? No, no, I really want to see everything everywhere all at once. Yeah, everyone says it's It's good. out to rent now, so I just need to find a night to sit down and rent it. Okay, all right. I'm so afraid because it's one of those. I it, So my wife and I, it's like sometimes we gel in the same movie, sometimes we don't, but we know which ones like the other would like, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. So that's one where we look at it and we're both like, 
will we both like this or no? Like, do we give it a shot? <laughs> because it's we do like stuff that's weird and different and odd and has ideas and is psychological and philosophical and stuff, but it has to be done a certain way for both of us to like it. And we're both like, will this do it or not? Because I hear it's pretty polarizing, which I like. I like movies that are polarizing. Uh, they fascinate me. So I, I, I should, that and Bob's Burgers, man, I got to just sit down and fucking watch them. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What is a terrifying moment in a movie for you that no one else finds scary? For me, it's King Kong 1933 when a brontosaurus eats a guy alive. I just find it so disturbing that a dinosaur associated with being the most friendly eats someone while they're screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about that. Um, yeah, because you're right. That doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, I always, I mean, uh, the first like top 11 list I ever did, I just got number one totally wrong because everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It was clearly just a me thing. And that was a learning experience because it's like, okay, now I know, mix it up. Make it some things are me, some things that are everybody, but you know, mostly things are everybody. Uh, the Banshee and Darby O'Gill scares the fuck out of me, man. I mean, and I know it's a bad effect, but that kind of makes her even eerier. Yeah. Uh, just the sound she makes and the, the effect and the long hands and the claws and the weird face she has when she zooms up to the door. It's like, oh, yeah, nobody finds it scary. <laughs> you want to know my weird thing that freaked me out as a kid? The cone heads. <laughs> My parents watched that movie and I was like, I had nightmares for months that the cone heads were going to come kill me. And I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess, I guess for a little kid, that's pretty, pretty freaky to look at. Um, maybe it's like your version of the pink elephants. Like most adults can look and be like, whatever. But to kids, it's like, oh, this is off. This is weird. I don't know. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. Who is your favorite Pirates of, Pirates of the Caribbean villain? For me, it's Blackbeard. I know most people don't like him, but Ian McShane was just so badass, and Jack Sparrow going up against the most famous pirate of all time is really just cool. I mean, that's a cool actor. I feel like they didn't quite utilize him right. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's got to be Barbosa. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think he's the one thing through all the movies. It's like... Oh, yeah. Like, like, what's he up to? And he does kind of change over the movies, too, which is interesting. And there's always going to be a part of me that has a soft spot for Davy Jones, too. It's just yeah. such a great design. And he's so weird. The way he talks is weird. And I don't know why <laughs> that me. fascinates me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. But but yeah, it's Jeffrey Rush. He's always going to win. <laughs> Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, what do you think about the birdie? Oh, sorry, the birdie. The bride from Kill Bill. You think she's a pretty compelling protagonist or not? When film two starts, yeah. Uh, the first film, I, I mean, you gotta give credit to Uma Thurman because that's like, in the first film, there's almost no complexity to her at all. It's all the performance. It's kind of like what Scarlett Johansson brought to uh, Black Widow. Like, mm -hmm. there wasn't much at first, and then kind of both of them become more interesting over time uh so i guess i'll say yes because it's ultimately supposed to be one movie um i really want to see james rolfe a long time ago i should ask him about it, did like an edit of the kill bill movies in a way where it wasn't so split up and it kind of mm. worked as one film is more flowing like i ask him about that at some point because i wouldn't mind seeing that because that's one of those where it's like a dream edit too like how would i edit this yeah uh, kind of thing Adam Grunther, thank you for the 50 bits. What's the worst Don Bluth movie for you? For me, it's Pebble and the Penguin. Not even Tim Curry could save that movie, and that's saying something when he was able to make Annie tolerable. Uh, that's the only reason it's not on there, because I do think Tim Curry's pretty fun in that. Um, probably Troll in Central Park. Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Hi, Doug. Do you think we'll see an untitled review show of Minions, The Rise of Gru? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Zelmiran, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, Bedtime Stories. Uh, you know, I did that for Disney Sember, and it's not good. Um, but I don't think it's horrible. Uh, it, it's got a few things that are kind of, that's kind of fun to it. Pat and Soa, thank you for the 50 bits. I legit feel you can compare the child and Kenobi. Sorry, didn't think it was a spoiler. Yeah, they just haven't been in any of the promotional yeah. materials, so I've yeah. been just trying not to talk about it too much. Um, and Hayden, that if you watch them on mute, you can see the characters. Yeah, well, especially with Hayden. He's got a great look. Um, and when he gives that death stare, it's like, that's a good stare. Mm -hmm. Um 
Uh, and her, same thing. I, I think he kind of nailed it. If you put it on mute and you say, that's this character. You, you see it. You totally see it. Even just like in the mannerisms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, this makes sense. And again, in many of the way she's written, it does make sense. I just don't think it all comes together as a whole. <laughs> Zelmiran, thank you for the 50 bits. NC recommendation, the Paddington movies. Maybe, man, those are growing in popularity, aren't they? There's mm -hmm. people that just love those movies. And yeah. I do like them. They, they are very good. Um, maybe, they're like, they're kind of Christmas movies too, aren't they? So that might be an interesting, yeah, might write that down. Hewlett fan, thank you for the 50 bits. What would you say is the best scene from an otherwise bad movie? Also, would you ever try to do an NC on Terry Gilliam's Brazil? It's a surreal masterpiece with one of the darkest endings I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, Brazil is uh, my all-time favorite movie. So, uh, you know, and I have it for the opening of a uh, freak show cinema. Uh, like I have a, a clip from it. So one of these days I probably will because um, I do want to talk about it. It was the first half, I'm sorry. Um, what would you say is the best scene from an otherwise <laughs> bad movie? Uh, I'd have to think it over. Again, for, uh, hmm. No, man, I'm trying to think, like, where we went. Oh, in, uh, What Lies Beneath, there's a really suspenseful scene where Michelle Pfeiffer is, like, she's paralyzed and she's put in this bathtub and the water is slowly rising up. She has to get, like, all her energy to like her foot to like just hit the drain open to drain the water and that's it and it's like it's really fucking suspenseful <laughs> in a movie that has like nothing else going for it but uh yeah i remember that was one scene where i was just like that was pretty damn good alexander thank you for the 50 bits hi doug <laughs> what are some of your favorite jokes in the ducktales reboot um man i'd have to go in a weird way a lot of it's just the casting i love casting the actress <laughs> who played Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And I guess, uh, was it Minnie Mouse? Yeah, Minnie Mouse. Uh, to play young Donald. Like, that's so brilliant. <laughs> and he's like in a 90s emo Donald, too. He has, oh, the Nirvana poster, but instead of a baby, it's an egg. That is so <laughs> brilliant. Uh, yeah. That, that's good. I, I, I know there's other. Uh, the, was it the horse becoming a gargoyle, the statue horse? And then he's voiced by Keith David for just a little bit of time. Like, that's great. There's so many great jokes, man. Yeah, uh, I, I don't even know where to start. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. Doug, will you review Heath Ledger's last film he did called The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus? It's really cool. His character is shared between Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell, and you completely believe it's the same person. Yeah, uh, I remember seeing that. I can't remember if I like I think I got a soft spot for it but it is one of those where it's like sometimes Gilliam gets in the way of his own you know sometimes he is the problem I'm just like you didn't need to do that don't get too like this is what it means kind of thing to just tell the story straightforward every once in a while but no I thought there's a lot of cool ideas in there and uh visuals and uh I, I do remember being happy I saw it if that made sense maybe for a freak show cinema might be interesting Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. When it comes to Kenobi, mm. apparently the show suffered numerous production delays and problems, one of which is mm. how Kathleen Kennedy, Favreau, and Filoni were concerned with the script borrowing elements from the Mandalorian of Kenobi having to protect a child in the first season. Uh, I kind of agree, too. Uh, there, there's a lot of similarity. I think if they're going to do a show, any Star Wars shows, in my opinion... They should do one with new characters. That's one of the reasons yep. I think Mandalorian works is because mm -hmm. we don't know who that guy is. Obviously, it's a Boba Fett-ish like character, uh, but he still has a different backstory and a different personality. And he was so good. I mean, he's better than the Boba Fett show. In fact, they had to bring him in to kind of save the Boba Fett show, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, I think when you bring in these other ones, if anything, a lot of diehard fans are going to say, wait, that doesn't connect to this or mm -hmm. my fan theory of the lore and stuff like that. And also just something new. Give us something new. I yeah. mean, I think that's why people really like Mandalorian. Anyone can watch it and you don't even have to know anything about Star Wars. You can just watch it from scratch and it mm -hmm. works. Yeah. Pat and Soa, thank you for the 50 bits. Not sure if I missed it, but have you ever done a Disney Semper on the 90s movie Brink? If not, I beg you to add it to the list. It's hilariously cliche and has 90s oozing out of the VCR I played it on. Uh, Brink! I remember that one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it looks There's very nice. There's an exclamation 90s. point. Oh, uh, yep. yeah. 
<laughs> Hell yeah, I watched that movie. Looks very 90s, early 2000s. Uh, oh, it's 98, okay. Um, maybe. Um, the, the sports ones don't do as well, at least in terms of like the Disney Channel movies, but uh, I might check it out. I do have kind of a soft spot for uh, the corniness of those. <laughs> Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. To answer an earlier question, Sinichiro Watanabe didn't make Wolf Rain, but other people that were a part of his Cowboy Bebop team did work on it. So uh. Sailor Aaron also said that, that they moved from that studio to a different studio and, like, did Wolf's Rain at that studio, but it's not the gotcha. same director. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, interesting. I, I always associate them as being very similar. I, I guess that's why. I mean, they're very similar, but very different at the same time. So, okay. No, that makes sense. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. In my defense, Heather, we all have stupid jokes that make us laugh. The B-movie one just happens to be mine. What would you say is yours? Oh, one of my favorite, like, dad jokes. It's so dumb. Hey, Doug, what's Mario's favorite type of pants? Denim, denim, denim. <laughs> denim, denim, denim. Okay, that's, yeah, that's... That's not a dad joke. That's a first grade joke, man. Come on. <laughs> I don't know why I love that joke, but I love that joke so much. <laughs> That's like the uh, what the Pink Panther say when he stepped on the ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. <laughs> dead ant. Dead ant. It's a variation of that. Yes, I love it. I love it. Actually, I can work with that too with Mario. Awesome. Dead, 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 dead ant. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 50 bits. When people say Marvel Cyclops is kind of lame, is lame, kind of bugs me. He's good in X-Men 97, but people should watch X-Men Evolution. There's an episode where he unloads his full power without his visor against the Juggernaut. It's one of my favorite episodes, but the whole does the character justice. I hear X-Men Evolution is really good. Uh, that might be one of those, like, maybe next year for Disney December, I might watch that show. Because enough people have said... It's really good. I know it's technically not a Disney show because they didn't own Fox at that time. I might just be like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see it. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Speaking of Malcolm in the Middle earlier, will there be a top 11 NC episodes of that series? Oh, man. I I don't know what I would pick. I mean, it's one of those where just they're all so good. Uh, I mean, I guess some are better than others, but yeah, I don't know what ones I would pick. I don't know. I'd have to really go back and watch them again. And again, I don't think I have time to do that, sadly. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the hundred bits. Would you review Anastasia for an NC one day? Love to hear your thoughts on the movie. I think the movie is okay, but I'm in love with the stage musical. I was so happy they took out zombie Rasputin and replaced him with a Soviet officer. Uh, I hear the stage musical is very good. Um, Maybe it's it's interesting to talk about because you can see them trying to capture that Disney formula and they don't quite know how. And it's so funny because it's it's Don Bluth doing it, who really did kind of recreate the Disney formula with something like Secret of Nim. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it I don't know, it, maybe because it would be interesting to talk about. The Master of Steve, thank you for the 50 bits. Do you think the Flash movie will be released? Oh, yeah. Oh, it'll I be released. I think it will be, especially with Keaton coming back. Yeah, that's way too big a deal, and there's way too much hype. Well, it, more people will be angry if they didn't show it than if they do, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not keeping that close to the Ezra Miller stuff. I just know stuff's been going on. It, it's bad. Um, but I, if I had to guess, I would say they, they're still going to release it with him, but maybe replace him from here on out if i had to guess right i mean honestly they're doing the flashpoint story at least that's what they've said and like you can really mess with the timeline with that kind of thing it's so very yeah it wouldn't be terribly difficult to even just write a different ending and have ezra miller not be the flash at the end of the movie you know what i mean like i don't know well here's the thing too it's like, done yeah, uh, here's the thing, too. I like him fine as the Flash, but I don't think anyone's like, you can't do the Flash without him. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone's like that. Uh, so it seems like a role you can replace. Uh, but but I'm with I'm with you. It's shot, it's done. Way too many people be curious what the original movie's gonna be. It's gonna be like the Snyder Cut if you don't release it like right. that. Uh, so yeah, I, I say probably keep it as is, but you know, after that, that's up to them. Neil, before I rock, thank you for the 50 bits. There was a show by Sid and Marty Crawford called DC Follies. Do you think today's politicians deserve a revamp of that show? Uh, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of this one. I've heard of it before, but oh, I've never oh, wait. watched it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. When was the? Oh, this is uh, in the late 
Wait, who made this show? Oh, okay. Was this like a British show or no? I'm not Comedy sure. Tuesday, 87 to 89. Um, cause I kinda, I thought there was a British show that had like kind of these puppets going on and stuff like that. Uh, I've never seen it, so I can't really, uh, comment. Yeah. So I'll try to check it out. Uh, they said it is an American show. It so. is an American show. Okay. Yeah. I'm confusing it with something else then. Uh, no, I've never seen it then. I'll try to check it out. Alexander, thank you for the 50 bits. Those are all great choices, Doug. I also thought Dewey's reaction to finding out his name could have been Turbo was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, there's so many good moments. Uh, Leland, thank you for the 50 bits. Are you going to review the 2003 Clone Wars and Force Unleashed for next is December? 2003? Like, the show? The 2D Clone? animated Clone Wars. Yes. <gasps> oh! Uh, I guess I should, um, the more I think about it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. And then what was the other one? Force Unleashed. It's uh, a video Force game. Oh, uh, I will see. Yeah, vi video games, we have kind of an idea, but but there's still a little wiggle room, so uh, I will see. Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. You know who'd make a good Flash replacement? Chris Pratt! <laughs> the Pratt-demic can't be contained. No, no, no. You, he'll just voice Ezra Miller. <laughs> <laughs> just just redub everything. Just, yeah, his voice comes in. DC Alcoda, thank you for the 50 bits. Have either of you listened to the musical Six or A Strange Loop? Six is a lot of fun, and A Strange Loop is so uniquely original. Just kind of have to listen to it and look up the story. Six is in Chicago right now, and I keep right. meaning to see it. I was going to say, it sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about it. It's just supposed to be really good. Mm -hmm. Exile, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, what happened to bum reviews? And what do you think of <laughs> Carl Urban as Wolverine? Oh, wait, is that an official announcement, or are they you just throwing around? I think they're uh, just throwing around a fan casting. Okay. That sounds good, uh, though, honestly. Yeah, he's played every other, like, geek icon, so, I mean, I, I think you could do it. Um, and God bless you. Thank you so much, sir, for, for enjoying uh, uh, that entertainment. Um, I just haven't had time to shoot anything with them. Uh, yeah, I, I'm getting older, man. <laughs> like I said, things are just becoming more draining, too. So, um, yeah, it's just a time thing. I'm sorry. But uh, God bless you, sir. Okay, cool. And that's all the bit messages, which nice, means okay. we have some time for some highlighter yeah, messages. Yeah, um, Lord R. Wolfen says, as a palate cleanser, I recommend Jackson Daxter, since the game time is just 10 hours at minimum. All right, man. Never even heard of it. What's it called? Jackson? Jackson Daxter. Dexter, let me see if the image... J-A-K-N-D-A-X-T-R. Uh... <laughs> Jackson Daxter. Uh, man, that's not what comes up at all. <laughs> this bodybuilder named Dexter Jackson is what pops up with oh. that. Uh, okay, well, if he made a game, maybe I'll play that. <laughs> Uh, honest reviewer, thank you for the 200 bits. Last bits for the day. Hope to see you guys next week. We'll be missing Friday to attend a fan expo that'll feature Kim Possible and Ron as well as the cast of Clone Wars. Hope to see you guys soon. Cool. Yeah, have fun, man. Uh, Orlando Garcia, thank you for the 100 bits. So we know movies and TV shows can be disgusting, but what about music? Do you know of any gross music? Uh... I don't know. Creed? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, man, I guess that's it's kind of an interesting question. Gross music. Uh, I don't know about that. It's a good question. Like, what would qualify? I mean, there's music you don't like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's like ear grating, but like gross. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. Aka Whale, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen the irate gamer in recent years? And if so, what do you think of his new content? I know that he's had a resurgence in 2020. I saw the uh, uh, crossover he did with uh, uh, James. And uh, I, know, I know he took a few pot shots at me. And I was like, to be fair, I, I think we kind of started. I think we did like a joke here or there early on, uh, which I try not to do. I try not to go after other uh, YouTubers and stuff like that. But uh, I saw that and I, th I uh, thought that was fun. Uh, I haven't seen much else, uh, sadly. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll try to check out more of it. Uh, Jack asks, is next week's review the Batman? Uh, Who knows? You just have Who knows? to wait and yes. That just <laughs> heard, um says on last night's stream, Doug, we rediscovered your glorious Poison Ivy costume. Do you I remember that? About that. That's yep. right. Yeah. Yep. What, if we hit like a big goal or is there a sub goal or something yep. like that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I mean, 
I, I can't help if I'm sexy, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I can, but I won't. Pansoa, well, thank you for the 50 bits. So Amazon is going to make a God of War show. See what you did, Heather? Oh, Uncharted is a fun movie. Alexa was listening, and now my favorite and possibly best video game character of all time is going to the Tom Holland, Nathan Drake te treatment. But you're assuming a lot there. We don't know. I was going to say, I it mean... It could be a good show, honestly. Especially with it being a show. Mm -hmm. I mean, shows, I think, have more possibilities in terms of... Uh, I mean, Heather's brought this up a million times uh, in terms of, like, what you can do with, like, a video game story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm actually intrigued to see where the uh, God of War show is going to go. More intrigued to see what's going on with The Last of Us show, because they just released a picture of it, and it looks great. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm very interested to see The Last of Us show, so we'll uh, see what happens. I'm a little worried about that. And the funny thing is, I don't think it'll be, like, bad. Uh, I feel like it'll just be okay. Because uh, in terms of a show, the only thing I think that would be really different about that that we haven't seen in other zombie shows would be the ending. Mm. Uh, everything else, I mean, it's like in a game, wow, this is so different and mind-blowing. And man, the story's so good because of the interaction and stuff. But in a, a show, it's like, well, it's a lot of it's just stuff we've kind of seen and we're used to. Uh, so I'm curious to see if they can find some way to really make it stand out in a way that, like, do something that hasn't been done in a show yet. Mm -hmm. Pressed off, thank you for the 50 bits. I know you're enjoying the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Is there any other Marvel IP that you would want to play? Uh, in terms of, like, a game? Um, yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm not... I'm so behind on so many games uh, that... I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure there are. I just don't know what they are. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, Power Gamer... Hey guys, I've been, I would have been here sooner, but I was reading a book about zero gravity and it was impossible to put down. I'm like, this is going to be a joke, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. Um, Snow Cone Studio 6 asks, hi Doug, have you thought of reviewing the Red vs. Blue series? Reviewing it? I, I don't know if I could do much with reviewing it, but, uh, but I really enjoyed it. I got pretty far. Was it like, I forget if it was season seven, I think I got to seven or eight. Uh, and, and I really, really like him. I, I've just fallen too far behind now because I know there is a continuing story. But uh, yeah, I, I remember like just absolutely adoring them uh, back in the day. I think I still have the DVD somewhere <laughs> when, you know, that's how I watched them. Kurt Wazowski says, I won't be around next Wednesday because I'm seeing Game Grumps live. Fun. Do you guys still talk to Aaron at all? I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, we are going to go to uh, a friend of mine is actually having his uh, his bachelor party, very light bachelor party, uh, at the uh, Chicago one when they come to Chicago. So we are going to see that show. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. All right. And I think that'll, that, that's our last uh, question or statement here because it Good is girl. 8 o'clock on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all so much, man. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. We always appreciate seeing you here. Um, we do have content here six days a week. So come on back. Tamara's going to be playing a game tomorrow. Um, she's speaking of game, br game grumps. She's playing Dream Daddy right now. If you want to see Tamara play a <laughs> dating sim and just nonstop go daddy then come on by tomorrow um friday malcolm will be here and um also doug will be here in the evening playing more guardians of the galaxy saturday we've got awesome comics and coffee and obviously a lot to talk about um <laughs> yeah a lot that we just found out here it almost sounds like <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, come on down hang out We'll, we'll uh, always appreciate seeing you here. And uh, yeah, Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Appreciate that. Um, the fan scription for Batman and Robin is going to be coming out in, I think, September now. Right? I the think fan so. I think, I think they're splitting it up into uh, a couple parts, too. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of stuff happened to, like, delay us, man. So, so, so it's stuff yeah. beyond our control. <laughs> right, right, right. Look at Walter. Walter posted about it. So yes. check out Walter's Twitter or Facebook, I think. So. All right, well, have a wonderful afternoon or evening, and we will see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye.